Everyone, let's welcome Christoph Fischer to Dragon Talk. Yay! Yay! Woohoo! Thanks for having me. So exciting. Uh, I feel like I've been following the story of Cantrip Candles forever on Twitter. Uh, it's so awesome the amount of you know, uh, 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 candles and scents that you're able to create and to create that immersion at the table. It's such a cool idea. Thank you. Um, yeah, it's been, it's been quite the story. It's an, it, I, I'm enjoying the story so far. I hope it continues to be a good one. Right, <laughs> yeah, sure because you will. just reached a milestone, I think, yesterday, right? Mm -hmm. We officially opened our first storefront. And I say first because I have plans. But for now, uh, we have a Hollywood storefront, which is very exciting because... I've been making them out of my apartment for years, and now it's time to go big. That's that awesome. Is, that's huge. Congratulations. Thank you. We should have had champagne. It, oh, there's so many things we should have had. I should have had a bigger <laughs> ribbon. But COVID makes it kind of, you got to tone it down a little bit, which which is okay. Yeah. It's, it's, it's nice to have an, a soft open in this atmosphere. That, I guess that is true. It must be strange to open a store where you want people to come and gather in the middle of a pandemic. Exactly. But, exactly. but you're making it happen. We're used yeah. to well, it. The world's used to it. And we're kind of adjusting. I yeah. like that uh, you've got plans. Now I'm, I immediately thought of there being like a cantrip candle store in every mall in America. <laughs> yeah. Just like another Move candle over. company. All four malls Yankee that candles. still exist. <laughs> <All four>. <laughs> <laughs> well, that'll make your grand opening plans easier. There it is. Do it four more times. I just dated myself as a Gen Xer who loved malls. I still love malls. Oh. They just, there's not so many anymore. Yeah. It's true, yeah. Oh, Even the ones that I, I haunted uh, back in Connecticut, <laughs> I think they're all closing down. I keep getting like you know notifications, mm -hmm. being like, "Oh yeah, mm -hmm. that yeah. place you spent all of your life, it's gone, mm -hmm. demolished." Um, but yeah. it's exciting because uh, you know the whole idea behind uh, Cantrip Candles is all about um, having these scents that you know we talk about how. Uh, visuals and artifacts like miniatures can enhance your D and D game, but we don't mm -hmm. talk about that other sense of smell. Um, and you're you're trying to bring that to more tables, right? Yeah, I, I mean, we we already know about the connection, or many of us know about the connection between memory and scent. And so, playing D and D or playing any tabletop game is so mind heavy. You're basically trying to put yourself in that scenario. So I, I find that scents kind of really help up the ante and and it allows you to immerse yourself a lot quicker. I always say that it takes about 20 minutes average for a table to get on the same page about like, okay, we're in this castle or we're in this city or whatever it need be. But I could probably get that down to 15 if you light a cantrip candle. No, I'm kidding. That's Ooh, a terrible like plug, it. but it's kind of true. <laughs> <laughs> I need that because I'm always that person that's like, no, wait, where are we? Exactly. Again? It takes a little bit of time. Yeah. Yes. What does it smell like again? <laughs> <laughs> I could really get there quicker if you could just tell me what the smell is exactly. like. Exactly. Yeah. So I think you need to take us back, though, okay. and tell us the story. Like, how how did you get here? How did this all start? Whew. Many moons ago, about uh, 20, <laughs> 2016, I was feeling a lot of... I was pursuing acting in L.A., and I was feeling... I was feeling the feel of when you pursue acting in LA, where you kind of come to this realization that you're like, okay, I can stay on this journey, but do I want to? And I decided I don't I, want to. But should I? Yeah, I didn't want to. And I wanted something that still allowed me to have control over my time. I didn't like working for other people. And so it's like, what can we do? Uh, I have a chemistry background a little bit. I didn't get a degree in it, but I love science and that kind of stuff. And so I thought, how do you make a candle? I don't have an origin story for the, where that question came from. I just wanted to see how to make a candle. And it started small with like, okay, can we make a forest candle? And it was out of my kitchen. And then it be, I kind of grew and some friends started buying some. So then it became my old bedroom. And then we kind of grew out of that and it became half of the house. And then it became, okay, Five years later, I definitely can't keep getting all of this in my own house. It's messing with my mental health, especially during a pandemic. So yeah. uh, my good friend kind of helped me find a spot that was perfect in Hollywood, nine minutes from home, so luxurious. And wow. it kind of has been a perfect fit. And now we have a store. 
That's awesome. So do you incredible. make the candles in the store as well now? So you're not doing it in your apartment anymore? Mm-hmm. My, my, my place does not smell as good. I can tell you that. But uh, <laughs> it definitely covered up like the the overall malaise of just living. Like when your house starts to smell because whatever, you didn't take out the trash. I had the benefit of having candles always cover all of that. And I have to work harder in my own home. But the mm. store smells divine. I'm sure. Do it. So what would you, what's your most popular scent? Most popular is still Library Scriptorium. It's yeah. a blend of old wood and dust and old books. Uh, every time people open it, they're like, whoa, that actually smells like old books. Um, yeah. So that's a very popular one. I think people like using it to kind of focus and get a little bit more meditative. Um, but Coffee Shop is one that came out a couple of years ago, and it's mm. quickly kind of gunned in for the first place. Uh-oh. I know. Well, we have we have Candlekeep Mysteries coming out yes. next month. So I'm thinking that the library candle is, I mean, uh, the obvious choice. I know. There, right? I know. I'm very excited. <laughs> Brinewater Tides was also an ocean one that worked out well when, when Salt Marsh happened. And I swear I'm not like stalking oh. D&D and being like, we're going to make them based on the books. But sometimes it lines up very nicely. But sometimes it does. So do you ever find yourself in places in the world and you just think... I need to make a candle. Often. It smells like this moment. Really, quite often. Um, L.A. does not have a very diverse scentscape. I will tell you that. It's kind of all, <laughs> it's all a little bit of like uh, dust and, and hot and sand. And, and, and look, I love L.A. as much as the next. But uh, I was lit, uh, in London for a bit and I took mm-hmm. a lot of inspiration from that, just how the streets always smell. There's always a sense of wetness. That led to developing Stone Moss Chapel, which is my favorite scent. But I long to travel when we can again. And just that's what I travel for, to kind of wander around and sniff stuff. Sevilla in Spain, I want to capture that smell as well. It always smells like orange blossoms at all times. So, yeah, I'm constantly oh, that's sniffing. Cool. That's really cool. So how do you recreate some of those smells after you have them uh, kind of in your in your palate? So... All candle makers kind of pull from a wide library of fragrances. So let's take bubblegum, for example. There's probably Mm. 50 renditions of bubblegum fragrance. And so sometimes I'm shooting for a scent and I try to just break it down into, okay, how do I replicate this? Let's say uh, a forest, pine, soil, things like that. And so I pull from various resources and then it's just a mixing game of add a little bit more of this, take a little bit of that out. And that's the most fun part, kind of where you're in the chemistry process. But every now and then I just kind of play around and I create something that smells really good, but I don't know what to call it. And then it becomes this nice game of chasing what is this smell? What does it make me think of? What um, emotions does it evoke? So there's two two processes, either hitting the smell or finding the smell. Do you put the actual, like say, you know, orange blossoms that you were mentioning with, so is, would you actually put orange blossoms in mm. the the mix or is it something that smells like that something that smells like that cantrip candles uses fragrance oils not necessarily essential oils some of our scents do have essential oils mixed in i personally have found that essential oils do well for aromatherapy or topical but they're not intended to combust so you can put mm. them in candles but i like using fragrance oils which are designed to be used in candles oh okay so it's not you know, it's not putting the actual Mm-mm. bit in and, and having I wish, it I wish combusting. that I'm like boiling leaves and stuff. I know, like, right? Yeah. But, but it's still at the end of the day, something that you're lighting on fire. So it's got to play nice. So you're basically a fire mage, not a, mm-hmm. uh, a apothecary. Okay. I right. definitely all... associate with evocation as a class far more than like druids, <laughs> you know? That's awesome. Mm-hmm. And so how do you uh, integrate it at the table? I mean, are you are you a, a dungeon master yourself? I am. I DM four campaigns and have only played one serious character, maybe one and a half, but I'm much more of a DM than a player. I miss playing, though. But yeah, you, I, uh, I usually light it at the table beforehand, about an hour before players came over, and then they walk in. If It kind of sets the tone right off the bat. That is cool. So if, you, so you, if they're going to be going through uh, maybe a, a a popular city, like if they're, if, they're mm-hmm. if the adventure is taking place in Waterdeep or something, like you would light a candle that's reminiscent of something more urban, sure, or like something. Uh, it 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 depends a little bit. So that is the big conundrum. Like, what about 
the fire plane? How, how do we make it smell like the fire plane? Or what about a big city? And well, one city might be by a dock, one city might be more right. inland. And so I try to get a little bit more specific and maybe like, for example, we have a, a scent that smells like a bakery. I think you could use a bakery mm. at, in the city as well. It would still give that sort yeah. of like, oh, we're on a city street and I'm smelling some freshly baked bread. Um, sometimes I combine, I'll light like the water one and then put that one out. And then an hour later, I'll light the bread one. And then it's kind of like this nice fade Ooh. from one location to another. Um, but you got to give it some time to breathe. I think there's yeah. people out there that are like, I lit three candles last night at my game. And I'm like, okay, I doubt that that smelled amazing. Yeah. But yeah, you got to <laughs> let them breathe little by little so that you can kind of enjoy them all individually. Some of them blend yeah. really nicely though. That sounds yeah. like someone was trying to do like a remix of like, exactly. oh, if I take these four yeah, candles exactly. and I light them at different times. It'll smell <laughs> just like my dungeon does. Complete yeah. customization is available. Yeah, right. Oh my gosh, I love it. You had something on your um, the on your website under our story that I just I just loved. It, it just totally resonated with me when it said, um, "I'll just quote it because I'm looking right at it instead of trying to paraphrase." <laughs> he started playing tabletop games when the hustle of LA left him with little money but lots of friends. That's I love that. It's the that's truth. Such, that's such a great um, just I mean a testament to tabletop games. I got friends. You don't need you know. A lot of other resources just come mm-hmm. together, tell some stories, and and have fun. Friends are a very important part of the Cantrip Candle story. Uh, I mentioned how my friend helped me get this spot. My friends have been some of my first employees. My friends were the ones that were some of my first customers. I don't think any of this would have been possible without the really close-knit community that I have that's been supporting me and has grown into this awesome supporting community now. Yeah, definitely. Have you been playing tabletop games for long? I, I, when when was this, the hustle of LA yeah. that left you with little money and probably lots of friends? About, I've probably been playing for about five or six years. Yeah, I okay. uh, oh. I I was a big Monopoly fan, and then you go to like high school and college, and you stop playing games for a bit, maybe, and then mm-hmm. kind of got back to LA, and I was like, all right, cool, game nights. Those are really fun now. Why don't we do this consistently? Yeah. And then D and D came along, and now addicted. <laughs> Yeah. So how did, how did Dean, did you mention this or I feel like oh. I've read a little bit about you. So maybe I already kind of you're, know the answer, but how did D&D, <laughs> sometimes I get confused. Like, did we talk about this or is it my, my research that I've done on you? How did D&D come along? The specific game of D&D? Like yeah. for you, yeah. For me, you for you, not, yeah. um, in 1974. In 1974. <laughs> Uh, no, my good friend Dash, he, he's, he's a DM that's been playing for a while. He's, he's known D&D through and through. And he one day was like, hey, you want to play some D&D? And I, I had always honestly been a little bit critical of Dungeons and Dragons because I thought wrongfully that it was, um, gave you rules on how to imagine. I thought D&D was closed and it was like, you have to play this way or this way or this way. Little did I know it offers instead guidance for you to imagine on a much wider scale. And once I realized like, wait, I can make up the story as I go. That's like how we're playing. It was incredibly freeing. And then I, I think honestly, D and D kind of helped scratch the itch that acting didn't necessarily, I want to be a storyteller more than a portrayal of characters, portrayer Mm -hmm. of characters. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah. And I think that's, you know, I think a lot of performers out there, you know, I you know even on previous interviews where people are like, it's nice to take words that mm-hmm. you know writers created and transfer it into your into into their performance, but there is something really great about improvising and yep. or making up those stories and then performing them. You know, and sometimes it's only writer directors or writer director stars are the only ones who can do that. But right. in D and D, you can do it in a in a session, mm-hmm. and you have that you know imagination to performance funnel uh, happening instantaneously. One hundred percent agree. I enjoy it for that reason too. I don't get to perform very much, but uh, it is nice to be able to do it at least in front of a camera uh, mm-hmm. <laughs> right mm-hmm. now. Um, I am obsessed with the matchbooks. I so, think you obsessed. And if I didn't have a child, I would buy them all, and I would leave <laughs> them all over my home just because they're so beautiful. I just want to look at them, but it's probably not a great idea. With a Thank you, kid. Um, That was an idea that followed the candles. I said, okay, I need a little bit more products. What else can I have? 
And I thought, okay, matches, you need to light the candles. And so I have a series of matchbooks that are all themed after different schools of magic and they all look like spell books. So you have conjuration, illusions, they are so much fun to design. And the cool thing about them is once you design them, they kind of become this staple product. Like you yeah. just make more. And I have a new one coming out, an abjuration matchbook. And I finished the cover and shipped it off for printing. And I think it's the most pretty one. So I'm very excited. Oh, exciting. Oh, nice. I'm going to have to get one of those. One of my players uh, is, a, is a new Relatively new D and D player, but they chose Wizard and Abjuration as their school. So what Not I, that's really the next character I want to make an Abjuration Wizard, and I'm so curious as to how it's going to play. Yeah, yeah, and the, I don't think he's uh, you know fully gone into the fun parts of it when you get to like the higher levels of mm-hmm. dispel magic and things like that. So he's, uh, I think, you know, having an artifact like that, like a matchbook, being able to this is my school, you know, mm-hmm. might mm-hmm. Uh, might really help. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, awesome. I can see the matchbooks from like taverns too, because you know, like yeah. bars always and restaurants always had their own little matchbooks. But mm-hmm. I, I, I love the in worldness. The art is is gorgeous. Thank Who's you. doing the art for that? I am proud to say that all designs and stuff that you see are made by myself, unless really? they're uh, like promotional materials, which I'll of course credit the art- artist. But yeah, I do the lid art. I do the the matchbook designs. It's harder and harder to keep producing new things because my responsibilities have changed, and so. It's always enjoyable when I can just sit down for a day and draw a new lid or something like that. Oh, you are multi-talented. Yeah, I try, Shelly. I'm just trying. <laughs> You're doing good. Do you do custom work? I used to a lot more. Um, I have a couple custom projects that I work with, but we just don't have the wherewithal to take on too many. My hope for the company though, down the line as we hire more and grow a bit more is that yeah, we can start really getting cool with the customization and, and offering that kind of service to people who want it. Would you do custom work for like a, a new friend that you maybe met on a podcast? Are they named? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, maybe. I might, I might, we would have to talk. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we'll talk after this. Oh, it's like I'll let, captive I'll let, negotiations let here. Let her know, let her know. <laughs> uh, but I mean, you know, the growth of this business from, you know, like you said, just selling to friends and then being able to have online orders and then opening up your own store in this last year. Um, you know, that's a huge, you know, growth pattern, right? And so how has it been? I mean, I, I your your background as being a, a performer uh, and a gamer might not have prepared you for running a small business, right? Uh, you hit the nail on the head. That is... <laughs> <laughs> Way to just expose my fears. No, that that that's that's one hundred percent what I wake up every morning and I have to kind of tell myself, "You've been doing it well so far. Keep going." Because I don't have a background in business, and there's often moments where I have to Google what the heck does that acronym mean and figure it out <laughs> as we go. And if I can give any advice on to how to like learn as you go, you just have to ask a ton of questions. You ask any friend that you think knows something about something and you say, what do you think about this? Like, what do you know about this? In terms of the business decisions, those heavy hitting moments of like, what lease are we signing or what copy printer are we working with? Those I've always based on how does the individual uh, kind of run their business. And if it feels like a friendship, it sounds like a good business partnership then as well. So I've enjoyed that there's a lot of honesty in running a business as opposed to like capitalism. Ha ha ha. It's all evil, but it's still out there. Yeah, that's for sure. And the parallels that I'm seeing in your story, you know, remind me a lot of reading of the history of the growth of, of Dungeons and Dragons and Mm -hmm. small publishing companies. Right. And how, you know, it basically was sold out of, uh, you know, Gary Gygax's car, you know, in the Midwest <laughs> in the 70s. And, you know, it kind of had that same kind of explosion of popularity and, and how do we fulfill demand? And then, you know, all of a sudden, here we are 47 years later and it's still, you know, this amazing thing that is now uh, uh, producing, you know, great work. And I think um, there's a lot of smaller presses out there that are doing the same, you know, kind of situation that you are where it's like, oh yeah, people really like the stuff that we're doing. How do we continue to do that and grow and uh uh, you know, make more fun stuff for people out there. And so yeah. it's it's paralleling a lot. The tabletop community is voracious supporters. Like, it's awesome. I, 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 in fact, feel beholden to have a great deal of gratitude and responsibility to, like, 
I don't want to let them down. There's so much fantastic support from the tabletop community that I really want to make sure to continue to produce top tier products and stuff like that. Cause they're awesome. Yeah. And here's a real kind of bringing it back to the playing of D and D. I ran a dragon, uh, dragon heist, water deep dragon heist campaign. And, the, and part of that has like, Oh, you can run your own business. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Would that be fun for you now? <laughs> For sure, it, for sure. I mean, it's still, you, you know, it's a different feel. Like, when you're playing another character, I, I don't like money management, but a character 100% could. Mm. Um, I think it would actually be more fun because there's no consequences. Like, what's the worst that happens if, you, <laughs> yeah. if, you, if your business tanks in water deep as opposed to in real life? <laughs> it would be a little riskier in your water deep business. Yes, yes, yes. Try some things out. Um, Can you? Uh, but oh, I'm I'm getting an incoming Google Hangouts call. My bad. What were you gonna say, Shelley? I don't know. I forgot <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> it was so important. Maybe the best question that I've ever. It'll asked. come Maybe back. I don't, <laughs> I don't know. It might have had something to do with figs. I don't know. Yum. Yeah. Are you going to make a scent that has figs in it? We already have one. has one. We have Sweet Fig Farmhouse. Sweet Fig Farmhouse. Nice. Which I can, I guess I should officially announce this at some point. The manufacturer of the oil has discontinued said oil. So it is, it is, it has it's a death right. rattle to it now. It's, it's not going to forever be here. And it's very sad. No, now we need another, uh, you know... Fig oil manufacturer to pick up the slack. I know. Step up, fig Get oil in touch, manufacturers. <laughs> Come we on. Have, we have just created a quest, I think, for <laughs> people out there. Like a big exclamation point just went over our heads. <laughs> Quests are, I'm so glad you mentioned quests because that is something I'm so excited to do in the storefront. I'm, I uh, really want to have there to be a sort of like quest system where if you come in, you buy a candle, you can just pull a little piece of a paper. You kind of like when it's like, uh, art lessons and you grab a little piece of the paper. Yeah. I want to do that for our community. I think we kind of stopped doing stuff that's good for the community after we didn't have to do it in high school or whatever, like you had to do community service hours. And so I'm trying to encourage us to do a little bit more of that. But I want to kind of encapsulate the idea of a quest. You you agree that you're going to do something within the next two weeks, you come back and once you check in that you've done it, you get a candle or something like that. Oh my God. I think it could be cool. cool. Super cool. Yeah, like you're like treating your customers like adventurers yeah. and you are sending them off to go do something. Like what types of things are you thinking about for quests? I love Right that. off the bat, I was thinking there are, we could clean up a park or something like that. I don't, yeah. but I think there are more direct ways of helping. And obviously I'd have to get in touch with organizations that are experts at that. But I'm sure there are some tangible ways that can help without, be it like donate a bag of food to this organization but it doesn't always have to be monetary. I feel like there are ways of helping your community yeah. that doesn't have to be expensive cash. You can expend some time or some work, some labor. Who knows? Yeah. And if you even frame it around, you know, slaying the monster exactly. of, of litter. Uh, you know, the litter <laughs> monster. Which is a big monster. Yeah. Yes. Uh, I think that'd be cool very idea. cool. And I would love to get a reward of a, a candle or yeah. anything like that. It's, it, you know, it's, it's like, it's your version of the, the punch card mm-hmm. uh, type yes. thing. But instead of just having it, oh, come they back get and XP you get, you get XP of, or you get, yeah. uh, uh, you know, the, the fact that you did something good for the community. Totally. That's the real reward. I, I would bring my I think kid that's what actually matters though. Like completely yeah. real talk. I think, I think, yes, candles are all good and well, but we got to make sure that we're helping those around us as we grow. I love yes. that. Anyways, yeah. on that oh, super that. sappy note, my apologies. No, I want. I the, the, my mind was turning because I know there's a lot of community in LA who love you know LARPing and puzzles and it's some of the stuff that we've tried to incorporate in our live events uh, in the past. Yeah. And I'm wondering if you've got some maybe people listening to this now uh, potential partners to design something for you. So it's not just a uh, you know go do. Uh, task and come back but mm-hmm. there's some gamification that happens that people have to work together to solve things so it's not just s- single quests mm-hmm. uh it's an actual community like a little yeah. D party has to form i'm so into that i love that idea i just cannot wait for covid to be done because it opens up <laughs> so many opportunities right now every every idea we throw out it's like uh 
maybe in a bit, maybe later, maybe soon. Yeah. But we're we're on the we're on the last little bits of it. I think. I hope. I hope. Yeah, I I'm with you. I hope. Uh, feeling hopeful for sure. That mm-hmm, mm-hmm. you're you know being in LA, you're obviously in an area that's been hit really really hard, and you've had it uh, harder than a lot of people have. So how has have you managed to keep your tabletop games going through throughout COVID, and how have you managed to do that? Everything has gone online. The amount of Zoom calls that we have and Roll20 app login yeah. hours is astronomical. And is it tedious at times? Yeah. I think any DM listening will admit that DMing online feels like running a whole other system while still maintaining a story. And I get a little tired of that. And every now and then I have to be like, sorry that I uh, snapped, guys. I'm so tired <laughs> of staring at a computer screen. But we've we've managed to stay tightly knit. and and pretty closely bonded because we share this story throughout this entire time period. How yeah, do you, sure. um, <laughs> have you been able to invent smell vision yet? Not yet. <laughs> Through oh, the yeah. Zoom's calls. <laughs> you're like, I'm burning this candle and it smells like the dungeon you're currently in. As of me. now, I, th- I think most of my uh, players have various copies of various scents. So I could just be like, all right, everyone, light your gold we make a candle oh, right yeah. now. <laughs> Oh, That's yeah. Smart. That's smart. That, 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 that would be a lot to be like, give every one of your players a copy of the candle. But it'd be worth it, I think. It would be. It would be. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that bakery smell, man, I do. I remember I lived in Brooklyn for a long time and mm-hmm. there was at least two or three bakeries that, you know, walking home after the bars close where you get that whiff yeah. of freshly baked bread. It's like, it reminds me of that time period and, 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 you know, having that kind of communal feeling in a city. So. They just got to add like slight cigarette and, and old alcohol smell. And then you've got a city street. Perfect. You've got it. Right. Yeah. Then you're like, that's Williamsburg for me. (laughs) (laughs) Mm. Yeah. Mm. I still really like the idea of like when you were saying like layering the different scents and like telling your story Mm. that way. Yeah, memories, good sense and memories. It really, it really, it really works. Mm-hmm. So, do you find that you know um, your players, if you're burning these as as a dungeon master, which I assume you were uh, when you were running in person, um, that memories are stronger, or that if if you smell a specific scent, where you're like, oh gosh, you remember that time when we you know defeated mm-hmm. that lich, uh, you know, and did that that cool thing? Is, is does it have that effect on play? I hope so. I, I, speaking personally, there's usually a candle going. So I, for me, th- this is all bled together into like candle, just a generic candle scent. Um, but I, I, I hope and would be very honored if someone who's used a candle for the campaign, let's say it's Brian Water Tide for their Salt Marsh campaign. And when they get back in person and smell it again, if it kicks them right back into that place, I would be so happy. That's kind of the goal to kind of create these immersive spaces that are tangible and uh, believable and kind of help immerse. Yeah. Yeah. I could, I could totally see that if someone, especially if it was, not, I, I get what you're saying. If, you, if you're burning candles all the time, mm-hmm. it's kind of, you know, it's, it's, it's just part it's of the like, ambience, part of the ritual of playing. But if it was like, we specifically got this and, and, and we've been using it for our campaign every time we play, I light it. Yeah. I would think that would imprint a cool memory for you. Yeah, or if like a specific NPC, mm-hmm. uh, when they showed up, you were always burning that candle. Like it would just mm-hmm. have that that kind of connection. I I love those those type of things that go beyond just the words that we say. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Do you are there scents that um, maybe would evoke instead of like a specific location an an emotion? Like if you really yeah, wanted emotion. your players to literally smell fear sure 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 <laughs> could you could you use candles in that sense in that sense no pun. i, know, I, know, right? I, like, I, I mean they're just rolling it's off just the rolling off the tongue i love it <laughs> and how much are these they're four dollars and 55 cents <laughs> i'm just kidding no i was just, just trying to use a different sense uh <laughs> word <laughs> i was confused for a second um <laughs> he was like Crystal, I was like, no. No, 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 they're not. Don't tell them how much they are. <laughs> um, I think so. I think I, I'm, I'm struggling to think of like a specific scent that would trigger a specific emotion, but I can think yeah. of like lavender would be relaxing and, and vanilla yeah. might be comforting. 
I think it's a lot easier to touch on positive emotions than it would be yeah. negative. But I suppose that would depend on someone's experience, you know, like if they right, had, it would it would be subjective. If they grew up in a bad house and it had a strawberry field outside, strawberries <laughs> might not be right. like the best thing That's ever. Exactly. <laughs> Yeah. Mm. Yeah. I'm have... remembering. Go ahead, oh. Shelly. No, I'm just, I'm thinking like when you say like the scent, how powerful it is as something that, that can take you back in with memories because I had the scratch and sniff book as a child <laughs> and there was this one, I don't even remember, I don't know what it is, but I loved that smell so much. And every now and again, I'll smell something that's like that smell. Mm -hmm. And I don't, I don't, I don't know what the smell was, or even what it was supposed to represent. It was a kid's book in the seventies. It probably wasn't that accurate of right. a, of peanut butter or whatever. But every now and again, I'll smell it, and it just, it takes me back, and it just makes me feel so warm and so cozy. And I just, I can feel like the pillow that I used to sleep on mm -hmm. or Aww. lay down on, like when, while I had my scratch and sniff book next to me, or you know, my teddy bear's fur. I go, I go straight back, yeah. to that moment. I don't um, remember what the point of that was, other than I just no mem the, had it's a memory a to the memories. Yeah, the power <laughs> it of is, memory. Yeah. I, I fully agree with that. For me, it's it's leather. Uh, whenever I smell leather, I go to my grandfather's basement, and I don't know why, oh, wow. but I just picture myself surrounded by his like war memorabilia, and and I can feel the temperature in the basement. But yeah, leather will put me in that place. Oh, that's really cool. There yeah. was a Berenstain Bears book. That yes, had scratchy and stuff on the Maybe that was my book. Yeah, and there was a basil smell because they were making pizza or something. And that's one that I am always like, hmm, this smells like the Baron Thane Bears book that I remember. <laughs> <laughs> basil in a kid's book? Yeah, because it was, it was. I mean, maybe they just had a specific sense. And they were trying to, you know, figure out how to do it. But oh, I remember there being a mush picture of a mushroom and the mushroom smell like wore off. Like mm, immediately, and so one. I don't really remember that. But the basil stuck around, and this was like hand me down because I was I had older siblings, so this was a really old book <laughs> that still That's had really the basil cute. scent attached to it. I'd just it's like strong. to point out that these are all incredibly specific memories that are triggered by scent. So that's, there you go. Scent's the yeah. best, best scent ever. Scent <laughs> ever. It really is. Yes. <laughs> so what about, you know, you mentioned that like negative emotions and how that's harder to to kind of create, but what about, uh, you know, so much of, of Dungeons and Dragons takes place in sewers. And, right, right, right. You know, <laughs> disgusting places and, and fighting undead monsters with puddles of pus. Uh, right. Cool. You know, so Damn. you might not want to buy a candle that smells bad. <laughs> I ran into a lot of uh, feedback early on in Cantrip Candles' brief lifetime. I think it was around two years when I started doing a lot of conventions, LA Comic Con or Con also in Los Angeles. And I would get a lot of feedback like, oh, so it smells like a sewer. Oh, so it smells bad, like the dungeon one. And I kind of decided that I'm not going to make negative smelling candles because you can find those if you want. There are tons of gag candles that will do that. Like it'll smell like zombie yeah. guts or a fart or whatever it needs to. And I say, go for it. I just also warn you though, that you're sitting in that smell for several hours and, and the, the appeal of like, Ha ha, it smells gross in here. We'll quickly wear off. And then you're just playing in a gross smelling space. But yeah. there are ways to layer in kind of unappealing scents. Uh, there's a pretty strong meaty smokiness to our Den of Thieves scent. And uh, it's supposed to kind of give you that feeling of you bust into a speakeasy and a bunch of eyes look at you and you kind of instantly know that I'm in a little bit of the wrong spot. And I think mm. that scent does a pretty effective job of doing that because that meatiness, that smokiness is a little off-putting, but still very, very enjoyable. Right. Yeah. Acquired taste for sure. Acquired uh, taste. And luckily, if you play at my table, you don't have to recreate the smell of farts because I'm, not, I'm already <laughs> providing that. Shared at many tables. <laughs> <laughs> uh, That's what a dungeon smells like. It's uh -huh. what it smells in here right now. Uh huh. <laughs> Sorry, we can't be with you. Boy, do I miss recording in the studio with you, Greg. <laughs> <laughs> it brings back such. Positive memories. <laughs> it does. Oh, oh convention smell. Um, okay, we actually have a question that came from Twitter. 
Um, and it. I love this question. This is from Raven Teller. Uh, Tegan, I believe, is the, the person who wrote it. If you could make a candle for your favorite class, what is the class and what are the main scent notes? Okay. I think right now my favorite class is the Druid. As oh. much as I'm as much as I'm into the evocation magic, I've played a druid and I really enjoy him. So I think it would have a lot of notes of herbs and things of that nature. But if I could, well, I could. The as it burns, I would like it to get more and more earthy and woody. So it almost smells like a plant degrading over time until it's just soil at the very bottom. I think that would smell awesome. I think you nailed it. You know, like I druids, was... they 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 live, they prosper, and then eventually they say, "We're going to go back to the dust, just like everyone else." Hmm. True. Neutral. I was going to just say like patchouli or something, but right? Like there's got to like be patchouli just... in there because there's got to be like a little <laughs> bit of a, a stoner vibe. There has to be. There just has to be. <laughs> Must. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Like every one of my college roommates. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Uh, yeah, no, I like that. I love the, the, the idea of it, of the smell changing mm-hmm. the more that you, you burn it down. That's the chemistry part, I guess, that I'll never understand. Simple layering. You just kind of layer how you pour the candle, one oil oh, at the wow. bottom, change the Little, oils as you go up. Huh. Oh. Candle making is the perfect blend between super scientific and super artistic. And that's why I like it so much. There's so much wiggle room. You can adjust your formulas. You can adjust your temperatures. But at the end of the day, you still have to stick to the same basic rules. Mm -hmm. I love that. Would you ever do a class? I find that there are some awesome competing companies that often will do candles for classes. And I've decided that I will leave that to others because... I don't think a class can be necessarily stereotyped or quantified in a single scent. My Druid interpretation will not be the same as someone else's Druid interpretation. However, as a society, we kind of have an idea of like, yes, place, a bakery smells like this, a tavern smells like this. So I find that going for the environment is easier to get a more accurate scent. Yeah, and a a class isn't necessarily indicative of what's happening in yeah. the fantasy. Right? right. If there if there's uh like a ranger candle might be great for an individual, but if you're using it at the table, then you got five players being like, no, you burn my candle today. Or I want a claret candle today. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Do you ever find when you're DMing that your your storytelling is like, oh, I need to make a candle that smells like this, or vice versa. We're like, hey, I just made this candle. So I'm gonna make this campaign go to this library because oh, yeah. this this library scent is super hot right now. It, it 100% used to, mostly because I had to try out these scents. I was like, guys, I need, I need to see if these are good. So the campaign would, like, when we went into a bakery, it was the weirdest session ever because my campaigns are super anxiety driven. They're, they're like high stakes. The gods are falling, that kind of nonsense. And so <laughs> like to have them like wander into a bakery and the guy being like, hi, can I get you some muffins was super <laughs> different, but it was uh, a nice way of testing it out. I don't have as much time to make new scents now. And so that's always been frustrating. But as I do make new ones, for sure, we're going to go to that location in the campaign because you got to see how it works out. Right. It's like play testing. You got to exactly. You got to test it out. How long, what, what is the, the time frame for creating a new scent? Like how long does it take you to smell test? Uh, it's different for every scent. Brinewater Tides took me eight months to make. And not wow. because it was particularly hard. I just kept going to Santa Monica Pier and huffing ocean air and not being able to match it. And it was the perfectionist side of me was driving me nuts. And so finally I said, just launch it. It's as close as you're going to be able to get to ocean. Barring like putting a fish at the bottom of the candle. That's a great idea. (laughs) It's a terrible idea. (laughs) Surprise. Here's your can of sardines. You get to eat at the end. But usually it can... uh, So... I'm I'm working on four different smells. They're not all going to come out at the same time, but I, I want to start having them in the barrel ready to go. And it can be as simple as a couple of weeks and you kind of just toy with it. You, you get the fragrances, you pour it, you see how it cures, you light it, you see how it fills the room. And then you make adjustments and it can be sometimes pretty easy or a little bit more tedious. Yeah, it seems like there's the push-pull of where you are right now of like, hey, we were this 
this indie craft type thing. And now it's like, okay, now we need to figure out how to make these things profitably going yeah. forward. And so designing new sets is probably the most expensive part of the deal. Yeah. And, and admittedly, the amount of variables that go into it are far more complicated than when it was before. When it was just me trying to explore scent, it was a lot. I didn't have to think of the overhead as much. Are we going to be able to source this much oil? Is that candle company supplier going to be bankrupt at the end of this month? Because the last year has been the wild west of, yeah. of products and supplies. Like I am calling my suppliers being like, I need 50 boxes of this and I need it now. And they're like, we've got 10 other companies that are asking for it. But <laughs> it's it's chaos in the candle world right now. I think any candle maker listening will be like, agreed, it's chaos right now. That's <laughs> I love that it's the candle industry too. <laughs> I know. There's a <laughs> national wick shortage. Like, what's that? Where's all the wicks? Is this because people are like turning to crafting mm-hmm. during quarantine mm-hmm. and they're just trying to find new oh, side hustles? And- the- but there's a, there's at least three John Wick movies though. You <laughs> sure, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> the the home fragrance industry apparently had like this astronomical boom in the last year because everyone's at home and they want to make their spaces yeah. sacred and smell good and. As a result, mm-hmm. a lot of people are making candles, and I love it. I'm when the water rises, we all rise together. That being said, it has been a challenge to kind of maintain the momentum while still not yeah. being able to get the resources that I'm used to. But it's getting better as the world is slowly getting better. It reminds me of um, you know a couple of people I know who are in the uh, the craft beer business who mm-hmm. have been like, oh, you know, it's fun to come up with these beers and they're popular, and you hit get a hit. And you start making that and then having that idea of like, well, I mean, the fun was making that beer, yes. not, uh, you know, creating that beer for the first time, not mass marketing that yes. beer to to people. And so I, I, it, I, I get this pull, push and pull of artistry versus profitability. Mm-hmm. Uh, and you're at the nexus of that. Yeah, I, again, Greg, nail on the head. <laughs> really just, <laughs> like, it, I love it. And I would say opening the store was a nice threshold because I was constantly fearful of like, is this the right direction? As of yesterday, when we opened, there was this immense piece of like, okay, cool. You hit a mile marker. You can continue to steer this in a direction that you want to. But it's scary when when you don't have the business background and you kind of are, are figuring it out as you go. Yeah, and, I've, and like I said, I've seen it happen you know, all over the world, but especially in the DRPG Area because like people are making dice and doing that mm-hmm. same thing and people are are uh, uh, you know uh, coming up with different you know software solutions for things or products and, to add to the game yeah yeah and it's exciting because you're like oh I'm getting into this this uh, amazing world but there's so much real world stuff that that uh, you know kind of puts up obstacles and I think you're doing a great job of being like okay here's here's the milestones that I can give myself attaboys for 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 getting yeah. and then you know making sure to keep and then back uh, to the trenches. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah well, you're giving hope to theater majors everywhere. That's, hey, that's, that's a big compliment. Thank you, Shelley. As a, you're speaking as a former theater major. Look, theater, if you don't go into acting, it still is going to help because set design, working mm. with people, a theater mm-hmm. background is going to give you so many magical skills in whatever field you go into because it's so versatile. And you don't even realize that you're learning those things. Mm -hmm. The whole storefront, the entire design of it. uh, Some awesome customers came in yesterday and said, it's beautiful in here. Who who did you have design? And I said, I just kind of took what I know in terms of colors and lighting and placement. And and that's all from stage design and and stuff like that. So go theater degrees. Yeah. Yeah, and you Especially can general public ones. speaking is mm-hmm. not a big deal. Yeah. Which is, you know, for a lot of people, they can't do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there you go, theater all the way. Um, are there any D&D settings that you think would be really fun to explore from a the scent perspective? The like, are you? Oh. Ooh, I want to make a Feywild candle so bad, and I want it to be... We, we, we talked about how scent can be so affecting with memory, but also in the current. And I want to make a cool candle that encapsulates the way that I interpret the Feywild to make the average human feel. Obviously, I'm not trying to have anyone get lightheaded or loopy or fall asleep, but I definitely want it to be this 
undescribable scent that you just cannot get enough of because that's how I picture the Feywild, just constantly enchanting you. Oh, that's cool. Mm, I like that. You mean like a cat, um, the caterpillar from Alice in Wonderland mm-hmm. kind oh, of? Oh, now you're speaking my language. Yeah, like that kind of vibe, a, a super groovy kind of Feywild vibe. Oh, I like that. I think a lot of people will. Mm. Will. He said will. <laughs> In the when future. When it happens. I, it's not like okay. I've got the secret candle back here. <laughs> <laughs> what is that back there, by the way? I keep looking at that statue. This uh, statue? Yeah. This is like... This is like my mascot. It is a, a yeah. dragon that's like in a zen yeah. pose. And I think it's a good reminder to breathe whenever things are getting... Uh, unless you breathe fire, then well, be careful. Rock it. <laughs> breathe. Breathe that fire. <laughs> when you got to, you got to. You got to. So if someone wanted to, uh, you know, jump in and get one of these candles uh, and integrate it into their game, you know, mm-hmm. obviously in pandemic, it's it, like we said, it's tough. But, you know, what do you think is the best way to do that that doesn't feel like... Uh, I don't know, over the top or ostentatious. Like what's the best way to kind of just, you know, integrate this into the sure. normal play? Yeah. Um, I, I always recommend uh, letting your players know because if your players have any sort of like scent allergies or something, just let them know that you're going to oh, light that's a important. candle. Big deal is lighting it an hour beforehand. You could light it as you play, but if you really want to kind of fast forward that immersion, uh, light an hour beforehand, it'll fill the room and it kind of gets your players in that headspace a lot quicker. For now, it's a little tricky to get your hands on one only because uh, we're still working on keeping up with demand. It's just a good problem to have. But in the coming days, and as, as we up production, it should be pretty simple to just kind of buy one, light it for your players, and, and see where it takes you. It kind of does all the work on its own. You just light it and let it go. What if the players don't go to the bakery? That you're... That you're- Lighting the candle. Well, that before. question applies to like, what if I planned a three-hour boss battle and they don't go to the boss <laughs> battle? Like, it's yes. the same kind of like. Well, then, then you got a cool candle. <laughs> no, then this is what I've learned in my studies about dungeon mastering. If they don't go to the bakery, then you create an NPC that we'll make brings go baked to goods to them. Ooh, Bob yes. the baker like, who yes. brings the bakery. You open sent the box. I mm-hmm. brought you some fresh baked bread or something. Ooh, that's a good idea. Mm-hmm. Here's my donuts. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Why did, when you say that, it sounds dirty? It did. I, didn't, I, didn't. I wasn't going to say it because I'm not a host here, but it did sound dirty. I didn't it's mean it donut. that way. Can you make even a scent called it out loud, I'm like, that's a little bit dirty. I didn't. Well, it was a very, what, it, what are the notes of Greg's donuts? I don't want to talk about Greg's donuts. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure uh, they smell great, Greg. They're very delicious. <laughs> <laughs> I said smell. You said delicious. I said smell. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. man. Um, there is a lot of challenges, you know, uh, ahead with, um, you know, opening the store and, and, and having all that. But I really like that the idea that, like, you know, you have a place to, to make it, like a laboratory. Do you ever get that sense that you're, oh, yeah. you are a mage, you are, like, experimenting with stuff? I've always associated candle making with, like, Snape's. Professor, like Professor Snape's, like lab, chemistry laboratory, like yeah, one hundred percent. There's lab feel, and I want to make it more so. I'm still new to the building, so but this office will one day look totally like decked out, like an alchemical lab, because I think that's cool. Yeah, and you have that set design background, and I got so. that set design background. Can I ask you a random question, please? Something that I learned from again from your website. Um, are birds not, if you have a pet bird, are you not supposed to have scents around the bird? <laughs> I know it's a random you question. I don't even have <laughs> my website so well, and I haven't updated oh, I it in a while. But I learned that birds have very unique respiratory systems. I guess all animals have different respiratory systems compared to humans, for example. Um, but because they're so fragile, uh, it's very important that they don't breathe in pollutants. And yes, we use good ingredients that are safe to use for your family and whatnot. But for birds, it's uh, frowned upon. So it is official response of candles to if you have a bird, uh, resist using any sort of like scent modifiers for your home. Wow. As far as I have researched, I am not a vet. Okay. 
Oh, I guess nice. that's, you know, the canary in the coal mine uh, kind of situation, right? That's what you get a new can of candles, your canary just goes down and you go, oh, no, this is not a good decision. Right. <laughs> that's terrible. That's, I mean, that is, that was why they out. brought them into coal mines was to be like, oh, they were, there's some bad oh, yeah. air yeah. and they weren't, you know, it, it wasn't detectable by humans, especially since they were there all right. the time. But if, if the canary was, was somehow affected, they were like, all right, now it's time to get out. There's a, there's a gas leak in here. Moment of silence for all those canaries that I know. <laughs> Pour one out for the for us dang humans, you know. I'm kidding. It's true. But it's these true. Um, cantrip candles are vegan, and like you said, they're all made with really high quality ingredients. Yeah, they're made with soy, one hundred percent soy candles and uh, fragrance oils. Sometimes blended with essential oils. Uh, I make sure to go through the ingredients on everything I work with because I'm breathing it in the most every time I stir a big True. cauldron of wax. So they're safe to use. Um, I use soy because it's a little bit more sustainable than perhaps paraffin, but I try not to rag on other candle types. Do what works best for you. Do you really make it in a big cauldron like that? You know it. Was- you know it. We got a big tank. It's actually kind of frustrating. We had uh, three tanks and one of them busted a couple days ago. So oh. add more struggles but uh we're gonna get two more huge way bigger tanks and it's gonna start looking like a brewery back here i think yeah i did not realize that's how that candles were made in actual cauldrons i wish i would it's it's like a or looks like a coffee dispenser tank but much larger okay but i wish i had like a a cauldron with like a fire underneath and just who's stirring that'd be so awesome nice yeah, you don't hear about like hags or witches talking about their cauldrons breaking their very often. Mm-hmm. <laughs> or they're like, oh man, this cauldron is, you know, we need to get it busted. It the iron monger to bring us hole. a new one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, so, uh, you know, final kind of bit I want to talk about are your campaigns because the way you've been describing them kind of tangentially yeah. uh, actually sound really interesting. They like the whole like, you know, gods uh, mm. destroying and all that stuff. So, yeah, uh, pick one of them and uh, you know, kind of describe the overarching themes because they sound really cool. My home, I've got two games that I've been playing for a really long time. And in one of them, they are in a world called Shelligan, which is basically Scotland and Ireland mixed together. Mm. Uh, they started out as young students at a, an adventuring school of sorts, and they've leveled, I think they're 14 or 15. So we're getting there. Oh, wow, yeah. But mm-hmm. currently they are dealing with the god Gond, which I believe is a forgotten realms god, kind of like this engineering aficionado. And I've interpreted it as the phalanx in X-Men, if you remember that reference. So there's this was... deity. The phalanx is whatever it touches, it kind of corrupted, and it was a digital entity. So oh, okay. I've got this medieval world where there's this god that's kind of introducing rapid growth technology. And it's helping improve the farmlands and it's helping improve the city. But the players are beginning to realize like everyone's talking different here because they're all part of this hive mind under the the worship of Gond. Mm. And now they've taken a vacation in the Feywild because things were getting so stressful that they're like, let's just go somewhere else where time works differently. We'll level up a bit and we'll come back and kill this god. (laughs) So that's that's how it goes. (laughs) That's super cool. I like that idea of a ever-present god who's like... Trying to do good, but is actually corrupting and and like it's he's I'm interpreting him as not he wouldn't have value in any or they wouldn't have any value in what humanity kind of boasts like those are inefficient. So this is a god of efficiency and mechanisms, and he basically wants everyone to think the same way and be the Borg. Almost. I was just gonna say this is very Borg like. It's very Borg, yeah. and I didn't again homebrew campaigns. You never can plan them totally, but apparently this is a cool plot line, and so we're going with it. Nice. Well, resistance is futile. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. I want to play in that campaign. Well, I do too. Next time you guys are in LA, come visit the store and we can definitely have a little one shot. Definitely. We I'll, are definitely visiting the store and so we are going a on a quest. Yes. <laughs> Sounds good. Me and Jenny Sounds want to good. We will be in the park cleaning up litter. I think you'll feel good after doing it too. I know I will. <laughs> I will. Yes. I, I, am, I, am, I am here for it. Awesome. I well, I love everything uh, about what you're doing, Christoph. I think this all is fantastic. I want uh, more scented candles in my life in general, and I think having ones that are themed for, you know, specific areas within uh, fantasy storytelling is super cool. And you know, congratulations to you for opening your store this week. Yes, very thank excited. you, thank you, and and thank you for having me on. This is 
I will, I will totally gush and say, this is a dream check mark. I mean, to be talk to the entity of Dungeons and Dragons and to talk to you two is such a flattering, humbling experience. So thank you very much for having me. Well, very. Thank you. Feel the same about talking to you. I know, well, right? Cool people mean cool people. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. <laughs> well, hopefully you find a new fig oil supplier too, because that one sounded really It's nice. a good one. It's a good one. I love it. Well, thank you. And where uh, can we send people if they want to find out more uh, and, you know, get on lists for, for you know, when, when more candles are ready? Sure. Uh, if you, like Shelly, would like to research more about Cancer Candles, you can go to <laughs> www.cancercandles.com. Uh, you can website. also visit our store at in Hollywood. The address is on the website. The next, op- when is this airing? Do we know? Uh, next week, I think. Okay, so the, no, they're not going to know about the pre-order. There's a pre-order opportunity on the 22nd. But every two weeks or so, we usually restock our website. That's awesome. All right. I can't wait uh, for more burning things. <laughs> Here's to more burning. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely check out those matchbooks because they are awesome. Yeah, and I think, I think they're totally safe to have around the house with... with. <laughs> Right. With Quinn, right? With Quinn. Well, they're safety matches, so it requires you to intentionally light them. But kids will intentionally light matches sometimes. Oh, so yeah. always That's be just, cautious. He accept he accepts that challenge. <laughs> 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 Gotta learn them early. That's perfect. Yeah. Awesome. Well, thank yep. you so much, Christoph. This is awesome. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. 